Vanessa. Hello, everyone. Ah, allô, tout le monde. <rire> Bienvenue. Merci euh, beaucoup. Peut-être on peut attendre quelques minutes ou est-ce que vous voulez que je commence dès maintenant? Je proposerais qu'on attende maximum une minute parce qu'on a les, un timing assez serré. Puis de toute façon, on va, on va enregistrer, donc les gens pourront avoir accès euh, plus tard. Donc, je vais peut-être souhaiter la bienvenue à tout le monde. I'm just going to welcome everyone and uh, repeat that this is recorded. So we'll put it on our YouTube channel after. So no worries if, uh, if you can't attend the session or uh, all of the session. Alors aujourd'hui, on est avec euh, Lisa Deakin. On est très euh, euh, reconnaissant à Lisa d'avoir préparé une session sur les leçons du jardin. We're very grateful to Lisa to have prepared a practical workshop on lessons from the garden. We have 20 minutes together and uh, I'm very eager to hear you. So uh, over to you, Lisa. Hi, merci Alice. Uh, this is so cool. I just want to say um, hop in. I'm a big fan. J'ai déjà entré à vu les expos, uh, les kiosques, à parler avec, à risoter avec tout le monde. Like it's so cool. Um, and I just want to congratulate you because it's, it's, it's the first time for so many of us using this. Um, so uh, thank you for, for introducing me to hop in. Um, je voulais mentionner, I would love for this to be a little bit interactive. So I see that it's just Alice et moi à ce moment. Like we're the only ones that are live and kind of participating. There should be a button in your top of your screen that says ask permission for audio video. I would love to see your faces, know who's here, if you're if you're interested in, in participating and chatting and And, and asking questions. Sinon, vous pouvez aussi uh, écrire des, uh, des messages dans le chat, c'est correct. Um, so I'm just going to start, um, yeah, as Alice mentioned as well. I'll share my slides. Now, this is new for me. So I'm just checking here. How do I share my slides? Um, I don't seem to have a button that says share slides, Alice. Is there? I thought it would be. Uh, like... Yeah, so it normally, oh. yeah, just at the bottom of your own image, you have the little camera icon, microphone mm -hmm. icon, YouTube, and then a screen. So okay. click on that. Oh, merci. Okay, so on va utiliser ça et voilà. Ça marche? Est-ce que vous voyez les diapos? Ça load. Oui, on voit les diapos, c'est super. Excellent. OK. Uh, je ne vous, vous vois pas, mais c'est correct. Um, maybe... Ouvrir... Ah, non, c'est correct. Je peux juste faire la présentation, puis je peux, je peux quitter et, et on peut jaser un peu, j'espère. Um, OK, welcome, everybody. Um, this is going to be a brief... Um, stream of consciousness about social innovation lessons from the garden. And um, when I was approached to kind of talk about gardening, I thought, um, what do I know about gardening? I'm a totally amateur gardener. I, I have gardened all my life, but um, as is the case with gardening, you're always learning, you're always um, changing and growing new things. Um, so I thought, well, you know, because this is a social innovation fair, Um, what lessons do we learn from gardening that we can apply to our social innovation careers? So stick with me. It might seem really um, meta, like c'est plein de métaphores, but um, maybe we can um, just explore this topic together. And I'm, I'm very interested in hearing from others as well. Um, si vous avez des commentaires, des histoires, like des choses pertinentes à vous, like things that come up for you as I talk about these concepts, I would love to hear them because... It was really just a, a late night brainstorm that I had about my career and my passion for gardening. Um, so a bit about me, um, moi j'habite à Ambrun. Um, I am a settler, so I'm living on um, the unceded uh, territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Um, my perspective and understanding of nature, natural gardening is very white and, and very settler. Um, Uh, sort of that paradigm. So I just want to really acknowledge that um, there is a lot of knowledge um, 
in, you know, from the first people um, in this area that I'm always trying to learn more. And I would invite you to learn more as well about how, how the first people produce food culturally, traditionally, um, some of their ways that they connect with land um, and just acknowledge that it is uh, a weakness, say in faiblesse de cette session que, que je viens seulement avec la perspective uh, of a settler. Um, I, am, I am living rurally in Embrun, which is in Prescott and Russell counties. I'm a mother of two boys. We spend a lot of time in the garden getting dirty. <laughs> my boys have eaten a lot of dirt. I'm always trying to grab them and keep them out of my, my poor plants. Um, but, you know, we're very hands on and it's really wonderful. I, um, I have a, a social innovation firm called DataFest Ottawa. It's been around for seven years. Um, it's a mix of, you know, sort of some of the things that I offer comme consultant série uh, les recherches, um, plutôt uh, service design um, and facilitation around groups and, and those topics in particular. Um, je fais quelques, I actually have the privilege right now of doing a session, um, a project on food insecurity, which really links my passion for gardening with food insecurity and social innovation. So I'm really fortunate to, to be doing this sort of work. I love growing things. I love learning. Um, I'm a gatherer. I'm a gatherer of information. I'm a gatherer, uh, a grower and gatherer of, of food and beauty and, and uh, good relationships. So that's a bit about me. Um, the plan for today, uh, we've got 20 minutes, comme elle a dit, on a 20 minutes, alors uh, un plan très bref. <laughs> We're going to talk about social innovation careers, and I'll share some of my gardening disasters with you, as well as some of the triumphs, um, and, and talk about the intersection of social innovation and gardening and connection and ecology. Um, I'm going to tell some stories. Um, I hope to hear stories from, from those of you who are, are listening as well, and I'll share some things that I think about while I'm weeding. <laughs> um, or, or more, more specifically, why I think things like weeding are really great for people who work in social innovation um, or any creative career, I would say. Um, please uh, visit uh, Bienvenue à, à poser des questions dans la langue de votre préférence. Um, on peut faire des pauses pour discussion si vous voulez partager une histoire ou une réflexion. Um, I would really welcome that. So, um, Many of us use design thinking or some version of it in our work. Um, I think that design thinking is problematic and, and we're starting to understand more how design thinking came to be um, largely um, by a dominant white, largely mostly male um, uh, culture and, and uh, group of experts. So um, while I still use design thinking in my work, it is something that I am rethinking and, and always evolving around. Um, and, uh, but I, for today's presentation, I thought we would use a, a bit of uh, anchoring in design thinking, which probably most of the people here are familiar with to some extent. So um, I like the design thinking wheel rather than a design thinking line. Really, we're talking about cycles, um, starting with empathy, problems, ideating around those, prototyping, um, testing what we've prototyped and implementing. Um, and I always, uh, that change between the purple of implementation and the blue of empathize for me, that's really iteration, right? Is that you always want to be going in the circle and iterating and, and learning and empathizing and, and new and, and seeing how you can improve whatever it is that you're building, a product, uh, a change, a policy, um, and, and a garden. Frankly, <laughs> parce qu'on est ici pour parler uh, du jardinage. So, when I see this design thinking wheel, um, I think about the seasons of the year: spring, summer, autumn, and fall. And in the last few years, especially um, now that I've returned to a rural lifestyle, I think about my life and my activities throughout the year uh, um, with the seasons. So. Um, I just thought that this was a first way to enter that social innovation conversation, um, being guided by the seasons. In the spring, you know, we're just transitioning into summer now. My spring as a gardener is very full of feelings of hope, um, uh, openness to learning, um, exper getting excited about experimentation and thinking how I might experiment with my garden for the year. Um, planning, um, it's about starting new things. So starting my seeds, looking at my soil and my, and asking, you know, how can I, how can I 
plan the year ahead. I think that if we're doing social innovation projects, it's kind of that same thing where we're in the spring um, when we're just starting into projects, we're exploring, um, we're planning. So I just immediately saw that link between how we how we do our projects and, and how my life now as a gardener is also very much guided by seasons and that there is a time for everything um, and that the seasons turn as well and 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 offer us renewal every Um, so the starting point, a lot of people, maybe folks in this in this um, session today have started gardening for the first time. And often, you know, you could see in, in March and April, especially this flurry of people starting seeds and taking pictures of their seeds and getting really excited about that. It's so wonderful to see many people discovering gardening for the first time. Um, so these are some pictures about about starting seeds really so so you have on the right my my seedlings there that are soaking in some sunlight they're very green they're very um thin you know the, the leaves are very thin and they're just starting to see the world um the middle picture is the di gardening disaster number one <laughs> and essentially what happens um i think in our projects as well in some of our social innovation projects is that we're asking ourselves what is the starting point for our work um you know, we want to, I, I'm working, moi je travaille sur l'insécurité alimentaire à ce moment. So the question is, you know, it's very easy to jump into how do we get people food? People are hungry. How do we get people food? Um, and that's, that's kind of where we're culturally maybe um, trained to go, right? Is there are people that are hungry, so we need to give them food. But I would encourage all of us in our social innovation careers, and I think a lot of us are called to do this, is is really reflect and take a long time and lay, and start picking apart causal layers and causal challenges of of social social challenges that we want to change, right? So um, I link this back to gardening and and kind of you know we want to jump into solutions, but really what is the starting point that we're called to do? So that that middle picture of a poor tomato plant, um, somebody jumped in too soon with that tomato plant. And, and they planted their, their seed here and they grew a beautiful little seedling that was full of hope and potential, but they put it outside too soon and they put it outside um, and they failed to do what we call hardening in gardening. Um, so essentially that, that plant struggled and, and maybe even died because it wasn't introduced slowly enough to the elements outside. So when, when we harden our plants, we start the seeds inside, they grow, they're very tender, they're very fragile. Um, and then we slowly over a period of two weeks, once the last frost has passed, we slowly put them outside for a couple of hours at a time and increase that, give them a little bit of sun, a little bit more sun each day um, so that we're not overwhelming them, right? And, and that's the starting point is we need to ease in, we need to give our plants some kindness and show them, um, introduce them to their world, to their big world outside of maybe our living room. Um, and so I just wanted to introduce everybody to that concept of hardening and, and how it related for me back to social innovation. Um, the picture that you see on the left is the picture of a tomato plant that has been hardened. So the leaf, you will see, you'll know that your plants are ready for, for being planted outside when you see some ridges forming on the tomato leaves in particular, and they will turn a bit darker green. Um, so going from that sort of neon green of the seedling that I have pictured all the way to like a darker deeper green that's that's when the plant is telling you I'm ready to go outside I'm ready to meet the world and and I can survive in the elements um, this is a picture of my garden last year set in an image de, de mon jardin de l'année passée um, and this lesson that I took from from last year's garden is I had put in this big space I was you know I got um, some soil delivered some very good quality soil so I was very excited to just dive all in and what I some mistakes that I made is that I just didn't leave enough space for growth um, I didn't pace um, my project well enough and I plant I just wanted to plant all of the things so I planted all of the things in this small space the garden did very well um, but it was also very overgrown and tangly and, and difficult to understand from, from the, an outsider's perspective. Um, so I think that this relates to kind of our social innovation projects a bit because we need to, we need to leave space in our projects for organic growth. 
Um, and I'll give the example of having a tomato plant that reseeded from the, the, the last year and um, it grew in the middle of my carrots. And I just didn't have space last year for a tomato plant to be growing through my carrots. So I had to pull it out. And, and in our social innovation projects, I think you know, we need to space the time and space the conversations and the consultations and the process so that organic things that pop up that are really great that might impact the project, enrich the project, um, so that we create space for them. Um, and the ultimate, I, I just back to the garden, the ultimate um, kind of funny thing around about last year's garden is that it was so dense by the middle of the summer that I actually had birds building their nests and having their babies in my tomato plants because it was that dense that they felt so safe and secure um, um, in my garden, which was lovely. It was so lovely to discover their little nest, but it was also like, oh, I just didn't space this out enough. <laughs> um, and here I wanna talk a little bit about connection. And so what connection is missing? Often in my projects when I've struggled the most um, around social innovation, it's because I'm putting pressure on myself to have all of the answers, to have all of the expertise, to do all of the things myself. Um, so over the seven years that I've been doing social innovation, I've learned in those cycles to reflect on what connections are missing, who has a voice and an expertise that I don't have that's going to enrich this project and, and the outcomes? Um, and what, what can those connections be telling me about my project and helping me to improve? So just understanding in a garden context that this is ecology, this is the connection. Yeah. Everything is connected to each other yeah. and everything depends on each other to survive yeah. and thrive. Yeah. No. Hi, je fais une présentation. Uh, can you go have lunch? Uh, have lunch? <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, Javi Bianco. <laughs> okay, um, sorry for that. So um, I just wanted to show you a picture of my um, uh, show you a picture of my apple trees. And what I did last year is I reseeded underneath my apple trees with clover um, because clover is a connection for those apple trees that is helping take goodness, do the photosynthesis and put um, nitrogen into the soil so that the apple trees have great soil to grow their, their fruit from. Um, so I've actually, you'll see on the right, there's a picture of a, the meadow that has grown as I've chosen not to mow that grass so that the soil under the trees is as healthy as possible for those trees. So that's just an example of building an ecosystem around your garden and what you're trying to produce. Um, I also have a picture of an aster, which is a native wildflower. Um, and I encourage you, wherever you're gardening, to make sure that you have flowers around your garden. Um, ideally native flowers that will attract a lot of pollinators, the bees, the butterflies, the flies, um, because when you have pollinators and pollinating friendly um, fruits, uh, fruits and vegetables and plants around your garden, they will also visit your squash flowers and your, your pumpkin flowers and make sure that those are pollinated as well so that you can produce the, the fruits and vegetables. So it is really about connection and ecosystem. And, and I think that there are lessons there for the work that we do as well as, um, as well as the garden as well. And just to give a shout out here, another great example of connection that the first people um, of Canada, of, of this place, so-called Canada learned was about the three sisters. So planting squash, corn and beans together is another great example of connection. And if you're not familiar with the three sisters, I'd really recommend checking it out. Um, so what do we need to thrive? We each need something different to thrive. And in design thinking, we talk about how important it is to start our work with empathy. So I googled empathy and plants and I found that there is actually a product for plant food called empathy. So I just thought that was really funny and I wanted to include it. Um, empathy is the first step of all of our projects. Um, it's about understanding what are the needs of the people um, that are involved? What is the need of the environment that's involved? Um, you you know, some plants need coffee grounds, like tomatoes really love that acidic coffee grounds um, as a fertilizer. Some um, crawling beans and peas want a trellis so that they can grow up. Some plants want to be buried deeper. Some want to be buried um, more um, closer to the surface. So it's just reminding us that in our work as social innovators and in our gardening, we need to really understand the different needs and empathize with, with everything um, as according to its different 
Um, being joyful in the garden. So being joyful in the garden and being joyful in our work is another lesson that I would like to share. Um, some ways to carry joy throughout your season of gardening in the spring and the summer, and even the fall and the winter when you're in your planting stages or you're harvesting is um, planting something fun. So choose something to plant that's just for fun. Um, in this uh, picture, you'll see in the white basket, there's a little squash there. That's actually not a squash for eating. It's a squash for making birdhouses. So I, I was gifted a plant this year, to, last year to do um, birdhouse squashes. And I did, and I have a few birdhouses now around my house um, that are just made from these dried out squashes. And that was really fun. I had never grown that before. Um, and, and, and it was really, really great to see that outcome. And it was just a little special thing that I did just for myself. Um, so finding joy, I think, in the garden and in, in our work is also really important and comes through um, and, and definitely contributes to the success of whatever we're trying to do. Um, so a couple of other ways of being joyful are celebrating your harvest. Um, really moving your body in the garden and enjoying that movement. A lot of us are in front of screens a lot lately. So just celebrate the movement, celebrate getting your hands dirty. Um, and when I mentioned weeding, you know, pulling the weeds of the garden can be very monotonous. But there's also a lot of research that shows that the more that we do that type of motion, the more creative we get. And it gives our mind space and, and rest to be able to ideate a little bit. So I find especially when I'm weeding the garden, that connection to my career is that I'm able to have space to be creative um, and, and in doing that work. So just a reminder to always bring joy to the garden and to your work as much as you can. Um, at the end of the, your season or at the end of your social innovation project, it's time to take stock of what's happened. What did we learn through the prototype, you know, trying something new that we planted this year for the first time? What worked? What didn't work? Um, what can we improve for next year? And, and, and really that's entering into that iteration phase of design thinking. Um, so iteration to me looks like composting, um, always trying to improve my foundation of my garden and the soil health. Um, a lot of us now that are starting gardening are buying soil, bringing soil to our homes. It's so important that we um, give back to the soil what it gives to us. And so I would really encourage you, if you have a piece of land or a backyard, please do composting. Please be kind to the soil that is in your very backyard, um, because that's where a lot of this change needs to happen. And, and that's where good growing um, starts. And also in iteration, you can choose your, you can save some seeds. So which vegetables and fruits did the best this year? Um, save those that did the best and save those seeds and iterate. Next year, you'll have um, perhaps even better plants and better produce um, because you chose some of the seeds that did really well this year and, and you re-sow them next year. Um, so those are just a couple of thoughts that I had on social innovation and iteration and and, and bringing that to the garden context as well. I think I went a little bit over time. Um, je m'excuse. <laughs> Et c'était plutôt en anglais uh, la majorité de la présentation. Je m'excuse pour ça. Um, mais je vais uh, vous inviter à, à jaser un peu. Um, uh, vous avez là mon, mon adresse courriel si vous voulez uh, parler, faire une connexion uh, comme vous voulez. Um, c'était vraiment un plaisir de, de, de partager quelques, quelques idées, quelques pensées que j'avais dans mon jardin. Moi, je trouvais ça vraiment inspirant, Lisa. Merci beaucoup. Moi, je suis à, à la campagne depuis le troisième été où on a déménagé à la campagne et c'est la deuxième année où je fais un jardin. First year that I'm trying seedlings. Uh, last year, I was like, OK, no, we can't. <laughs> There's just... It's too big of a step. J'ai beaucoup aimé les différents euh, états d'esprit que tu nous recommandes d'adopter et dans le jardin et au travail de faire des choses joyful stuff. Je me rends compte que c'est par j'ai tendance à être très j'ai un livre puis je voulais être très très organisé puis effectivement il faut un peu laisser aller parce que sinon c'est pas c'est pas très drôle. C'est la même chose pour apprendre à faire du sourdough que j'ai fait aussi cette année. Oh Donc, my just gosh. let it go. You're gonna, it's going to be fine regardless. It's going to be pleasant. And if it turns out great, then cool. If not, it's still 
going to be interesting. Alors, merci oui, beaucoup pour ça. Moi, moi aussi, avec le sourdough, j'ai dédié, je pense, quatre ou cinq mois de ma vie cette année sur le sourdough. Finalement, j'ai dit non, le sourdough, ce n'est pas pour moi. Ce n'est pas pour mon style de vie euh, de maintenant. Mais, mais oui, c'est vrai. Like, we take time. Take time to learn things. Um, don't do it all at once. Um, these are also like les grandes leçons pour mon carrière aussi. Like, s'applique. Like, enjoy the process, enjoy the day to day, um, look up once in a while and celebrate, but, but don't, don't try to do everything at once. And it's the same with gardening and, and that's what it teaches us. Agreed. On peut... Merci um... pour l'opportunité de partager. <laughs> Mais merci à toi, je trouve ça très, très chouette. Je ne sais pas s'il y a d'autres personnes qui ont envie de partager, mais on a, on a fait, donc, le, the, we designed this to have, like, very short sessions. The next one is already starting at 12.35, so I don't want to go too long over. Um, mais si vous voulez rester poser des questions, c'est super. Puis sinon, mais vous pouvez toujours aussi parler avec Lisa uh, en chat privé pendant tout l'événement, pendant qu'elle est là. Puis, euh, dans les chats privés, vous pouvez aussi euh, avoir des échanges vidéo. Donc, moi, je vous quitte. Je te remercie encore. Lisa. Merci, Alice. Je et, reste euh, et puis je vais parfait. voir l'autre. Merci. <rire> merci à bon salon, tout le monde. Merci à toutes qui sont venues. <rire>